In this video, we're going to talk about the YAML header. The YAML header controls many aspects of the R Markdown document. As previously mentioned, YAML stands for yet another Markdown language. Unless you're using R Markdown for advanced purposes, books, blogs, websites, things like that, then you probably don't need to know a lot about the YAML header at this stage. And if you do need to know about the YAML header in detail, then you probably need a more advanced introduction to R Markdown than this video provides. However, I am going to highlight some of the things the YAML header does that I think are very valuable for data scientists. The first one is references. You can add a bibliography to your document using the YAML header. So for example, you might add something like this to your header file. Bibliography colon file name dot file type, where file name is the name of your bibliography and the file type is a specific file type supported for references or bibliographies by R Markdown. There's a huge list, which I've shown here. And so you can see many of the file types that are supported for bibliographies. If you want to add a citation in your document, the citation must be placed in square brackets. And if you have multiple citations, they have to be separated by semicolons. A citation in your bibliography file is going to have a key associated with it. In order to call that reference in your document, you have to use at key to cite the relevant reference. So here are some examples from the RStudio website. So here we see some text, blah, blah. And then in square brackets here, we have C at DO99. So this is a call to a specific reference, DO99, that's in the bibliography file, followed by some relevant pages. The semicolon here indicates that we have a second reference. So also at Smith 04. So here's a second reference that is referenced in this particular section of the document. For more details about bibliographies with our markdown, you can visit the RStudio website and the information is currently available through this link right here. Now let's talk about producing different document types using R Markdown. One of the most incredible features of R Markdown, in my opinion, is that you can easily produce multiple file types with a single click of the knit button. So if we added the following code in our YAML header, it will produce a PDF document, an HTML notebook, an HTML document, and a Word document, all with a single click. You're probably familiar with PDF documents. PDF documents are excellent for distributing a static, unchanging document. They're also great for submitting homework solutions to your instructor if you are using R Markdown for class assignments. An HTML document is excellent for sharing interactive files and can also be viewed in a web browser. An HTML notebook is the excellent R notebook you sometimes hear about. It's sort of like an HTML document, but the source code can be downloaded by toggling the code button in the upper right-hand corner of the file. It's great to share with collaborators because they can update the document, add analysis, etc. because the source code is available within the document. But one of the key considerations when compiling it as, a R, as an R notebook is you have to make sure to run all of your code prior to previewing your document. So specifically, you can run all code using Control-Alt-R if you're on a PC, or Command-Alt-R if you're on a Mac. And if you don't do that, then the code chunks will not be evaluated prior, prior to previewing the document, and so they won't show up in the previewed document. You don't have that same problem with HTML documents, PDF documents, and Word documents, because the code is run as you are knitting the document together. Lastly, I mentioned the Word document. So if you have to have Microsoft Word edit editing capabilities for your document for some reason, then you can use that particular document format. And these are just some of the file types that can be, that can be produced using R Markdown. There are many other things you can create in R Markdown. I'm going to mention several more. One of them is presentations. You can use the IO slides underscore presentation or the slidey underscore presentation out type, output type, and there are others, to create a presentation using R Markdown. If you want to use R Markdown for presentations, then a single hashtag will start a new slide with a title. Star, star, star can be used to start a new slide without a title. And hashtag, hashtag can be used for a second level header. You can also create something called Shiny Apps with R Markdown, which is essentially an interactive web app created using R Markdown. You can create websites using R Markdown, books using Bookdown, blogs using blog down, dashboards using flex dashboard, 
in HTML widgets using various packages. And all of these can be created within the construct of R Markdown. So it's really pretty impressive what you can do with R Markdown in terms of dynamic generation of information. As I previously mentioned, you can create many different kinds of document output by specifying the different output types in your YAML header. So in this document, which was used to create the videos that we've been working through, I've specified outputs of HTML notebook, PDF document, Word document, and HTML document. And I can hit preview for the HTML notebook, or I can knit to HTML, knit to PDF, knit to Word as I desire. And then those documents are going to show up in the folder where everything is compiled. So I have my file pane open here, and I can see the various file types that have been rendered. So I have the crash course in our Markdown PDF that's been rendered. And so you can see the PDF file here, the crash course in our Markdown HTML file here. And we see that can be opened in a web browser. The crash course in our Markdown Microsoft Word document, which if I click will open in Microsoft Word. And you can see I have a nice Word document right here. And at the bottom here, I have my R notebook. And the difference between that and the HTML file is that it has the NB here in front, which stands for notebook. And if I click that, I can view in web browser. And notice the upper right hand corner has code here. And if I click right here, I can download RMD and actually see the source code that was used to generate the document, which is pretty cool. Lastly, I have one final thing I'd like to do with you here. So this is an example here. And what I want you to do is to highlight this, this file information here. It's actually quite long. It's a file on my GitHub page. And so highlight this, copy and paste it into your R console, or into the console. Make sure you close R Studio or whatever R console you're using. Then find the downloaded file on your computer. And when you open that, you can toggle the code button in the right-hand corner of the file to download the original source code that was used to generate this notebook file. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So I hit Control C on my computer since I'm on a PC, Command C if you are on a Mac, to copy that. We're going to go to my R console here and download the file, should be pretty fast. Now I will close our studio. The file that I just downloaded is saved in this folder right here on my computer. And this is the file that was downloaded. So I'm going to double click it. It's automatically open in the web browser. And in the upper right hand corner, I can click the code button, download RMD, and open the original source file that was used to create the R notebook.